Welcome to the Crit House, everybody. I'm Jeff Larson, and we have a just a fantastic show today. I'm very excited about this. Stella Johnson and uh, and Phil Penman are here with us. Um, it's great to have you uh, join us here on the Crit House. Uh, just quick introduction: Stella is a photographer and an educator, um, and she is known for her her passionate and honest documentary projects. Uh, she has two books out. And uh, her images have been widely exhibited uh, both across the country and internationally as well. She teaches workshops with Leica Academy, um, but she also holds positions at Boston University and Lesley University here in Boston. Um, and this is the this is the impressive thing uh, about you, Stella. For me, anyway, she was a Photo Lucida Critical Mass Top 50 selection twice. Um, which is just, uh, it's, it's very impressive. Phil Penman um, is also here with us on the upper left. Phil is a British born street photographer. He's residing in New York City. His coverage of the September 11th World Trade Center terrorist attacks is, uh, is included in the 9-11 Museum's permanent archive. Um, he was once selected as one of the 52 most influential street photographers. He's also a Leica Academy instructor. And his debut book, is called Street, and again, it's uh, it's it really it's just an honor to have you both with us. I've been uh, such such a fan of both of yours for such a long time. Thanks, sir. Rob Rob Davis is here. He is in uh, Gran Canaria, Spain, and he is going to be showing a project called Extranos, uh, which uh, I, I think you told me means strangers because I don't speak Spanish. Um, the project is a portraits of people at a uh, at a local mall. And uh, Rob, maybe you can tell us a little bit about that project and yourself. Okay. Well, first of all, thank you all very much, all three of you. It's wonderful to be in the presence of, uh, of you all. And um, I feel a little bit honored. I'm a little bit shy. <laughs> um, the, project, uh, the project was, I'm a, a photographer uh, from Gran Canaria. I was born in England and uh, I moved to Gran Canaria where I have a daughter. And I was spending a long time looking after my daughter. And I went from being a 50-50 introvert, extrovert, to being like 90% of being an introvert. And I felt like I lost my, my capacity uh, to talk with people, to, to interact with them, and to get the expressions that I wanted from them. So one day I had this moment of clarity, and I was over in a shopping center. And I just decided to set up a, a very small, very simple one light studio. Um, and, and this is what we're looking at. I grabbed people that were walking past and as fast as I could, I, I engaged them and I tried, to, I tried to get something from them that, that I thought would make a compelling picture. And as regards uh, what I'd like from, from critique, if it's, if it's possible, I really, would like to know if this type of project has a home at all. Um, as far as exhibition is concerned, um, also it, most are, are quite tight headshots. And I would love to know if uh, Phil and Stella recommend uh, mixing, interlacing uh, other aspects of like detail shots or maybe some three quarters or full length portraits. Um, and, and where I should go with this project, really? Um, should I add to it? Should I exhibit it? Does it have a home or was it just uh, an exercise of, of, uh, of mine? Well, uh, Stella, start us off. <laughs> Sorry, Phil. I don't know if I can no. go up. No, go for it. Uh, you know, listen, did you make all of these pictures in one day? No, it was over the course of... Um, well, I, I had about 45 minutes per session and it was over the course of a few months. I'd, I'd pop in, I'd set up really quickly and I'd grab maybe four each session. I love the idea, I, you know, I really do. And I think that you should expand it and do it for a couple of years and see what you get, you know. Um, yes, like something like this, this young woman in the uh, profile is beautiful. And there were people um, smiling and with their eyes closed. You have all these different gestures and things that I think is really interesting. But I would I would move it out, you know, take it outside too, maybe to the countryside, and we could see the trees in the background beyond the backdrop. Okay, so you'd have your backdrop, you would have the trees, or at a gas station, or something like that. 
you know, um, I don't know anything about where you live. So I do, I, I do like context, but I like the idea of putting everybody in front of a backdrop, sort of like uh, what Richard Abaddon did for everybody. Like, that's a great image. Uh, you know, it gives me joy to see somebody laughing like that, you know, and uh, I could see taking it further and, um, and don't worry about placing it, okay? None of us has much luck placing stuff, honestly. I have to be completely candid with you and with our viewers, you know, um, it's very hard to exhibit, very, very hard. It costs money um, for the gallery and they have to be sure assured that they're gonna make money. So I, um, I, wouldn't think of, I wouldn't think of it like that, do it because it gives you joy more than anything else, A and B. I would suggest that you take it up, make many more and maybe outside of this particular context. Okay, you, I mean, I would love to see what's beyond them also, but maybe outside. You have a light on them. Did you bring lights? Uh, yes, just, just one uh, and a medium softbox. That's all, some, some user reflector, but uh, mm -hmm. very simple setup. Yeah, no, less is more. I think a simple setup is always the best. Yeah, um, I, I just like the, that so somebody's having their coffee. It's fabulous, you know, and look at, you know, I would continue doing it. I don't think uh, you should worry about placing it just yet. It's, it's too, it's, um, you need to add to it. You know, you're right. I think you do need to add to it. And believe me, when I tell you this, we're all, very few people get to exhibit their work. You start by submitting to group shows and maybe you'll have one or two images picked and you go from there. So Bill Penman, Bill Penman, what do you think? What are your thoughts when you see the images? It's kind of an interesting take. I, I, I see it more it's coming from who you are. Um, I actually have a friend of mine, uh, Bob Harper, who had a heart attack and almost died. He's and uh, he did a similar kind of project where it what he wanted to photograph all the people that he knew and loved, and it was like a similar take on it. So I'm I'm kind of wondering, you know, where this you know the story is from you. Um, technically, uh, definitely needs a little bit of work. Uh, watch kind of your highlights and stuff like that. I also like Stella's idea of taking it outside as well, um, showing full body. Like if, if, again, to Stella's point, don't even think about exhibiting or anything like that. A lot of the time it, it can take a few years before the, the body of work even has any depth to it. And say you were gonna do a book or an exhibit, you might go, you might need hundreds of images before you narrow it down to like 20. So right. you, you're gonna need a lot more work. Um, work on the technical stuff as well, if you can. And you don't, you know, it's not the be all and end all, but you don't want to ignore it. You know, like the mm -hmm. highlights, getting the catch light in the eyes, if you can. If you can have some kind of look to it with each image, like I, I see there's a variation of backdrops. Um, I know Grand Canaria well. You are, are you actually a cyclist by any chance? I'm not. No, no. I used to go there every year training. So beautiful place, and it was very sad to see the volcano um, erupt. But the there's some you know there's some great places there that you can shoot, and it would be quite a nice uh, project to take out on the road, like put it on the street, um, and again full body stuff, detail pictures. Uh, very important because you can actually tell a lot about a person just from small details, maybe the hands, the tattoos, you know, little things like that. And if you were to do something like a show, it would be nice to have, you know, the, the, the smiling headshot with maybe a detail piece as well, especially like if you were doing a small collage in a book. Um, but no, I really like the idea of idea behind it so what what was it that really made you get started on this like just you need to come out of yourself or uh yes i mean that that was that was the main thing really it was i i my photography i've been a photographer for a very long time and um and i i switched between art and like art oh, it sounds terrible but uh photos that are less accessible let's just say that 
And, but he always kept coming back to portrait photography because I just love faces. I, I'm, I'm in love with faces. And, uh, and that's why they're all quite tight and, and uh, there, there isn't any three quarter lengths or anything like that. I just really wanted the faces in, in it. And, um, but I, I do see, I tried to vary, as you, as you said, the, vary the color and vary the pose, vary the light uh, pattern. Um, but still they end up looking like headshots. And I don't know whether people are as interested as weirdo photographers like me. <laughs> are, you, are you getting the story with it as well? Like who they are, what, you know, the name, like certain questions. Are you incorporating anything like that into it as well? Well, absolutely. I mean, there, there's a load of backstories from them. I mean, some are so beautiful about, uh, because I sent the people uh, the, the full size image after because they right. helped me. So I said like, you, you're welcome to it. It's as much yours as it is mine. Um, yeah. And I, and uh, and what happened was uh, the the people when they received the image they wrote back to me and and the stories that I got some some fantastic stories but I don't want to talk too much but if you want to hear I'll tell you <laughs> but um and uh, and one man was very sick with cancer he's not in the the image at all but he he had a, a time you know they gave him four months or something so um his wife dragged I photographed his wife and she went home and she dragged him out. And uh, got him in front of the camera, and I spent Great. a bit of extra time on him. So she was so happy, and it, it did cause a lot of joy, uh, I have to say, which I'm most proud of. Uh, the, the, the images are almost a, a byproduct. So one of the yeah. questions I have about, like, sort of not knowing, does there, do, when you put together a body of work like this, do you what's you need to tell the story of what you're showing, right? I mean, there needs to be uh, a a project statement like so so rob what you know what's your what's the project statement you say what so what do you how do you describe this when you tell people what you're doing uh the the people that i stopped in the street well so no when you're so when you're talking to people like us or other photographers and you're saying this is what the project is like what's the what's the what's the meaning what's the so if you were going to go to a gallery how would you sell them on what this is because you have to be able to communicate this this is these images are important because yes i understand and it's it's a difficult question to answer uh, because there's there's it almost feels like there's two sides to it there's there's my side of me uh feeling that I didn't have the power to stop people in the street and didn't have the power to, to, to engage them in conversation, to capture the images. And this is a selfish thing, which is why I almost called the project Estraño, which is stranger, uh, to take away the ego because they're not the strangers. I'm the stranger. I'm the one that stopped them in the street. Right. Uh, so, uh, and I, I, I oscillate backwards and forwards on that and then there's the project that other people that won't get this dialogue uh and i i honestly i don't know any suggestions would be wonderful um because i i see i just see faces from all over the world and and uh in different i i have a narrative i'm sorry that sounds so empty and and unprofessional but i'm sure i could come up with one i well, think i think it's early days there's no, there's no rush right well it's that's it seems right. like it's a project about your town in some ways about the place you that you're did. in it could be it could be because there are there are not uh, the the uh, the finished images um of which you've got uh was it 14 there um there's actually 37 um, images that I've that I selected that I said okay this can be this can be part and this has been quite uh, um, cutting with them as well I didn't put any junk in or any fluff or anything like that they were all images and um, my wife um, said a wonderful thing when I was selecting the images she said your best portraits are the ones with bits missing and I said uh, what do you mean bits missing and she said, like, there's a little story that's going on there somewhere. And, uh, and when you select the, the, the good ones, I can see that there's a piece of it missing. And I always thought, like, this, this might be something to grab hold of as well. Like, that, like, the story that's not there, the story that you can't tell with pixels or 
uh, what I was saying or what they were doing. Stella, does that mean anything to you? Do you agree with that? I mean, I, see, I certainly see it. Yeah, but what I wanted to do was go talk about image number five, because please do me a favor. That guy has gorgeous hair and you cut it off. <laughs> and I just want to see that whole head of hair, you know, and um, those kinds of details are so important. You know, that to me, it's a, it's a statement. He's making a statement and you have cut it off. I do like the next image where you do cut off the guy's head, you know, right at the, yes. And that's great, you know, because look at his eyes. If you had even come down lower, his eyes would have been, you know, really dramatic if you had cut him right here. But there's a place and time for the cutting and the, the, um, that all that hair would have been gorgeous. So I just wanted to add that comment. I think you need to keep at it. It's a great project. I think you need to go outside. I, I love that you're getting stories and names and you're sending the images to everybody. Absolutely critical and important. And just remember, you know, it's giving you joy. Anything that gives you joy, you will be successful with. That's the thing, you know. Um, you put the, the right energy out about it. And yeah, you do want to sit down and just the way we're talking now, talk about this work. I felt like I couldn't speak to people. I was feeling shy. So I set up my, I set up shop in the mall with a backdrop and one light and people came up and I, I took quick pictures and I got their story later after I, after I um, sent images to them. And um, that's the gift. That is the gift. Those stories um, need to go with the pictures. Okay. So maybe, you know, every um week you post a different image with the story on instagram or every you know whatever it is you st and then it becomes it becomes something there you know people a lot of people get um exhibitions and other things get noticed at, on instagram so don't discount that but and make sure those stories are there and ask them you know ask them for a quote ask them how they want to be um you know, because it's a collaboration, you're collaborating with them. So how do Absolutely. they be represented, you know, verbally, you know, written in words and visually? I love it. You know, I, I agree with Phil, you get your technical chops together a little bit better, you know, for presentation. Um, but yeah, I, I, I say just keep doing it. Something will come of it. So Rob, when you, uh, you don't, you don't show these pictures an awful lot. Is that right? Is that what I got from your, um, the email that we had initially that not a lot of people have seen these. Is that correct? Absolutely. I, I've got no, no internet presence whatsoever. I've got a <laughs> website that you got the link to. And, and so I, I've got some copies on the phone, uh, of, of pictures and I show friends and people and, and they say, Oh, that's good. But no one of any kind of, I don't want to, you know, but regular people, non photographers, let's just yeah. say that. And every, everybody loves them, but then yeah, I could show them a picture of anything and they would love that. So um, <laughs> it's, it's nice. To, it's, it's nice to get some, some, uh, some good feedback. And, and this was one of the main reasons. And as for sharing stuff on the internet, I'm, I'm so useless. I, I've, I'm like, I'm gonna get used to it, man. It's, it yeah. sucks, but it's like, um, you know, especially if you want to go down the gallery route, a lot of the time they'll look at what your Instagram presence is yep. and see it, it's more about what you can bring to them than what they can do for you. So like they'll, they'll pick people that might have 200,000 followers, not based on the work, but because they have, they know that they have a massive reach. So it's one of these things where you, none of us want to do it it's just it's a necessity that in this day and age you have to have a, a presence on all these different social forms um and again you can't become reliant on one or the other because one of them could go down any day so it's just it's just part of the process man yeah i can see that well so it would be it would be interesting to see if you were going to set up your uh, web page to include the stories of each of these people or something that gives them some context for what the image is. And, and the same thing if you were going to do it on Instagram. So you'd post them on Instagram and then tell a little bit about 
uh, who these people are and why these images are important to you and why they're important to them as well. Yeah. It, I think it could be something really good for Gran Canaria as well, though, because especially with, um, you know, what's happened there, like this could be like an instant in where it's a project about people from the island and you would get, you know, you could, you could get some leverage, um, working with even like the local government doing an exit ex exhibition purely based on the people of Gran Canaria. Like if there's enough sto enough good stories behind it, I, I could definitely see them doing something. It's a great yeah, idea. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah, there must be some local yeah. outlets you'd be able to show the images at there. Uh, Rob, listen, thank you so much for uh, for showing your images. I, I, they are uh, they're stunning, and it's uh, it's really fun to talk with uh, with you about them, and uh, and just great to uh, to be able to to uh, hear from Phil and from Stella. It's really Im very impressive. I want to thank you for, uh, and it's also it's also a challenge to get out there and put your your images out to the world, especially if you haven't done that um, more broadly. So thanks for having that courage. So and uh, Stella and uh, Phil, thank you so uh, thank you so much for participating. I do want to tell everybody that uh, Stella has a workshop that is uh, coming up here in Boston in, uh, in at Seeing Revere Beach. Uh, from July 29th to the 31st. So uh, if you're in, in the Boston area or want to come to the Boston area, then certainly that is an opportunity for you. And then Phil uh, has a show that's going up at the Leica Gallery in Washington, D.C., Life During the Pandemic. It can be seen with an opening on August 4th at the Leica Gallery in D.C. And I'm going to link to a couple of videos for you here to take a look at. Leica Conversations, Learning to See with Stella Johnson, and another Leica Conversation, uh, Photographic Evolution, A Conversation with Phil Penman. And I want to thank you all for participating, and thank you all for viewing The Crit House. <laughs>